Welcome back to the channel. I thought it'd be interesting for you to have a look at some of the bikes that we've still got in the shop and some of the builds that we've done. First thing I've got over in front of me is the XS650 that we built for Oil Can Grooming. We were asked to build this for them for a promotional bike type thing. Uh, they wanted something quite cool and funky that was a little bit different uh, that they could use on their stand and stuff like that, uh, events and everything. So we decided after a good chat with them that we were going to go with this little XS650 hardtail chopper. Actually, I really quite like this bike, it's a fantastic little thing and uh, it handles superbly. It's a brilliant bit of kit. So it's a little bit sort of bespoke to them as you can see, you know, it has their logos on etc. But that's not the only bit of individual here, the tank and every part of it we sort of made. You know, it all stemmed from, I'm going to walk in front of you in a second, it all stemmed from this headlight, to be honest. They picked that up from Beauty Auto Dumble, and I really liked it. It was something that I wanted to use on something, and I suggested that we utilise brass and bring brass through the bike. You can see all the little accents on it. So that was the inspiration, really, for the whole bike. It often happens like that, that you'll have some little cool little thing and then you'll build a bike around it. So you'll see all these little bits of brass that we brought in and for, from having the idea initially we actually put in this hardtail frame. This is a, a well done hardtail, it's not a, a full hardtail frame. Okay let's start at the front then. Headlight obviously, I've spoken about that headlight. You'll see on the forks that they've got these springs on them. Now those don't actually serve any sprung, sprung purpose or suspension aids or anything like that. It was just an idea I had and I used some exhaust springs. Now not exhaust springs that hold the exhaust together. These were put over exhaust in the 1960s and 70s to aid cooling. So it ran cooler because what it did, it provided airflow across the surface area. A bit like fins on an engine. Um, we used those and they were perfect fit over the forks and then powder coat and black so you've got this sort of sprung effect on the front without the expense of the spring at the front end. I mean we were working in a budget so we had to try and do what we could and get make things as effective as we could within the price bracket really. Again we, st we stuck with the original mags and I drilled the original mags out to get something a little bit more bespoke and I really quite like them. I think it works really really well. The bars these I had made and had them bent and shaped so they were in line with the tank actually. So if you have a look around here, yeah. have a look around here mate. Uh, so the, these bars are bent in the same, what do you call it? Circumference. No, not circumference, that's a circle. Same bendy bit. <laughs> we'll call it bendy. <laughs> same bendy bit. Bendy bit. As the tank, so it's the same shape basically. Uh, and it, and a, one of my big focuses is the bike needs to be rideable. This is a really comfy riding position. You see this, I mean, sat onto it here. It rides really, really nicely. And I see lots of custom bikes are out there that look amazing, but you're like riding a bike like, like this. Horrendous. You couldn't do more than sort of half an hour on it before you'd be really struggling. So I try and make all my stuff workable and rideable. Looking at the front still then, these levers, we wanted to go as simple as possible. And these are actually modern levers that we, we took down, we got rid of all the markings on them, etc. And tried to go with the simplest setup of levers as we could on that front. Again, you can see the accents of brass and the brass plates and stuff we put in uh, to bring that brass in. These grips uh, actually were done by Jagard. Now, that's... Paul uh, over in Goa, he can cast brass. I mean, the dude's fantastic. He makes some amazing things. But he does some fantastic stuff, uh, like these brass grips, and I'll come on to some other bits that he's done for us as well. Uh, the pipes came around, we want to do them in this like shotgun uh, effect with the brass uh, plates on there, uh, heat covers on there, brass on the pegs as well, that we machined up on the lathe. The tank itself, the orange colour, have I talked about the orange colour? We haven't. The orange colour actually stemmed from oil can grooming, so that was their original product, which was Iron Horse Beard Gel. 
beard gel, beard oil, beard gel, imagine that, Russian gel in it, uh, beard oil, and that was this orange, uh, really burnt orange colour on the tank, and uh, with sort of dark red burgundy uh, accents and name on it, so we utilised that in the tank, and on the tank we actually put in the journey that I took for them, so I had I delivered this bike down to Wheels and Ways in Paris and rode it down there and used the opportunity to visit the D-Day beaches, which was amazing. I mean, it's one of those things that I'd always wanted to do because my granddad landed at Sword Beach. He was 4-5 commander and I ended up joining the Marines, etc. That was my inspiration, really, to go and join the Marines. So it was a fantastic journey. That was a film done with that and uh, that will get released at some point. Hopefully before this, but it will come out. Right, I'll have to get off this for the next bit. The seat, another Jaguar special. So Paul had made this for us with the brass outer around it. Nice little black seat on there. Underneath it, you'll have to come around this side, I think, mate. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Underneath it, you'll notice this fire extinguisher. That's not just any old fire extinguisher. This is where all the electrics are. So your battery, ev uh, the ignition, everything is in there. That's your ignition there. And there's your lights on and off. Housed in the spout of the, f of the fire extinguisher. In there, you'll see this little, this little beauty. The kickstart is in fact an old 0.5 shell. Managed to get hold of that. And uh, we put that on there as a kickstart as a, uh, an, uh, a reminisce of the D-Day beaches that I went to visit. Again, a little bit more brass on the pegs. And as we come back, we get to this, which is the uh, fuel can. Significance of that, thinking why is there a fuel can on there? We did this as a, a thing that could be taken off. So it actually screws on it and you can take it off. I did it because the oil can grooming beard oil comes in little tiny jerry cans like this. So we thought we'd make a big one so when they come to a display and stuff like that, they can take this off. Secondary purpose can be used as 10 litres of juice. So you've got 10 litres of fuel in there, because those tanks don't hold a lot. You can put 10 litres of fuel in there to gain a little bit more distance. The rear Fender, I already have. So we managed to make this work for this, which was really cool. And you can see with the back wheel as well, we drilled it out and even put, I'll get you right in for this, but this is a close one. Uh, little nine millimeter shells as dust caps, which I thought, again, another little thing, just alluding to the D-Day trip that we did. And finally, if you come around the back, last bit, you see these, these two lights here. Again, uh, two brass cast lights done by Paul at Jagard and uh, did a fantastic little job. Just little tiny gems that are throughout the bike, you know, things that really are nice and nice bits of detail that work really, really well. So that is the 1980 Oil Can Grooming XS650. It was not a bad build. I really quite liked it and I loved riding it. It was fantastic. Um, one of the things that, as we said, it was all based on the brass and stuff like that. And I think what we can do is show you the process of how we did that because you've got so many different types of brass here from a very, very old headlamp all the way to modern stuff but I wanted it all to sort of blend into each other so it all looked as though it was from the same era which is an interesting process which we'll have a look at the next video on how to do that. I hope you liked the XS650 uh, if you did please like and subscribe uh, to the channel and we'll do some more walkthrough and talk throughs of some of the bikes that we've done in shop and I'm going to do some videos on all the little techniques that we used to do certain things. Certainly we're going to look at the brass for the oil cam bike. See you next time.